YouTube Frogs, welcome back to another complete guide, this time giving an update on our Osmanthus wine loving Geodad, Zhongli. We'll be covering how he works and how he plays, potential weapon choices, constellations, artifact choices, team comps, and showcasing him in the Abyss. It's been a long time coming since I made a 42 minute course guide on Zhongli way back 8 months ago in April of 2021, so I'm excited to see how much my guide making has polished since then. If you are new here, first off, welcome to the channel and appreciate you dropping by. I also stream most nights on Twitch, feel free to check out my community over there and their chaotic chill vibes. Link in the description. Alright, let's begin. Timestamps are provided for your convenience. Here's what my Zhongli looks like. Endgame investment of level 90 out of 90, he's constellation 6 with level 8, 11, 11 talents. Since Zhongli is not a newly released character, my investment is unfortunately not the usual level 80, constellation 0, level 6 talents base investment that you might be used to. For his artifacts, we'll be running 4-piece tenacity for general HP and buff utility. If you don't have full 4-piece tenacity, don't worry about it. Zhongli has one of the most flexible 2-piece 2-piece artifact choices that I'll go over later. He's probably one of the most forgiving characters and least investment to have a big impact when it comes to artifacts. His main stats currently will be running an HP-based burst support build, HP% percent, geo damage, and a crit rate. This is my preferred sub DPS build since his HP is already well within solid threshold and his base burst multiplier is very high with low cooldown and low energy cost. Don't worry though, I'll also be covering the triple HP shield bot build in the playstyle section. With the Favonius Lance at R5 level 80, here's what his current artifacts look like in his general stats at level 90. I'm trying to aim for a solid balance between the HP, her rate crit damage, minor amount of recharge for his burst, as well as the geo damage bonus from the cup. So, I think most people know what Zhongli does, but there are some newer frogs that would benefit from an overview. Also, providing some easy to digest values for his shield strength. Normal attack. So his normal attack is a smooth 6 hit string that includes a cool spear kick. Multipliers are relatively low but have relatively fast animations. Mostly used for Favonius Lance procs if necessary and main DPS Zhongli's whether you're physical or memeing with pyro or cryo infusion. Elemental skill. Zhongli's staple shield skill and pillar summon ability. Press version. Only summons a pillar but has a low cooldown of only 4 seconds. Old version deals AoE Geo damage first, grants his signature Jade Shield, and summons a pillar on a 12 second cooldown. And yes, it mines rocks really well. If you know, you know. Gotta mention it. Also, anyone remember the days when his old version didn't summon a pillar? Good times. In this demo, you can see my Zhongli generate a second pillar. This is only possible with Constellation 1. The pillar resonates with other Geo constructs, each dealing Geo damage to nearby enemies. Every 1 to 3 pillar resonates will generate one Geo particle. You can clearly see which constructs are resonating with the visual indicator. His Geo Shield scales off of Zhongli's max HP and lasts for 20 seconds. With the hold cooldown being 12 seconds, his shield uptime can be permanent. At level 11, base shield is 3000 HP, percent gain is 24.3% of max HP. So a 35,000 HP Zhongli here grants 11,500 base HP shield. A 50k HP Zhongli grants 15k shield. Now the base strength of his Jade Shield also has a 150% absorption against all elements and physical damage. Basically what this means is that his shield is automatically 50% stronger. So at level 11, effective HP from his shield is 17,000 from a 35,000 HP Zhongli and 22,500 from a 50k HP Zhongli. Roughly translates to 40-50% to of Zhongli's max HP. Now these values are with a level 11 elemental skill. So to scale it down, drop the strength by about 30% for a level 6 shield. This still enables 35 to 50,000 HP Zhongli to provide a 12 to 16,500 effective HP shield at level 6, which is about 30% of his max HP. That's still a second health bar for most characters. This then brings in his Ascension 1 passive, which provides a bit more durability to his shield. 5% every time it takes damage, up to 25% additional shield strength. You can see this particular shield strength stat in the attributes page of a character. Finally, Zhongli's Jade Shield also reduces the elemental and physical resistance of nearby enemies by 20%. This includes Animo and Geo resistance as well, which normally don't have easy ways to reduce resist like normal Viridescent Venera Shreds or Superconduct. First, this is Zhongli's famous Meatball skill. He flings a massive Geo Meatball at the enemies, dealing a very high multiplier of damage and petrifying them. Certain bosses immune, like the Chloride Flower here. The Jade Shield that you see after Zhongli's burst is his Constellation 2. Unfortunately, that's not a C0 thing. This ability is pretty straightforward, 12 second cooldown, 40 energy cost, making it very fast to rotate into. Petrify is 33% uptime on perfect rotations, which can increase with this Constellation 4. At level 11, this ability has a whopping 965% multiplier, one of the main reasons why Burst DPS Zhongli is popular and easy to invest in. At level 6, this is still 640%, which is very high for a 12 second cooldown burst. Talking about damage numbers here, brings in his Ascension 4 passive. 
All of his skills, including normal attack, scale somewhat with his max HP. These max HP percent values are infused within the abilities and are affected by crit damage and additional damage modifiers. To give perspective, 33% max HP for his burst ranges between 10,000 to 16,000 raw damage, which can crit and scales with geo damage bonus. So then, what playstyles are available for Zhongli? We know his burst has an insanely high multiplier with fast rotations, but he also has one of the strongest base shields in the game. With this in mind comes two clear-cut builds that can also mix and match. First is the F2P friendly low investment HP shield bot build. This involves triple HP percent on all artifacts and purely focusing on making Zhongli as beefy as possible. F2P friendly weapon with the black tassel providing HP percent as its secondary stat. With this particular build, you'll be sacrificing crit rate and crit damage and geo damage bonus to maximize his tankiness and therefore his shield's tankiness. My level 90 Zhongli with this particular build running black tassel at level 80 reaches over 50,000 HP. With a level 6 to level 11 elemental skill, his shield's effective HP post-absorption calculation ranges from 16,500 to 22,500 HP. Breakdown and visuals are in the town section and takes like 30 seconds to digest. So this build makes his shield extremely tanky and effectively doubles your teammate's health bars, refreshable every 12 seconds with a hold skill. Now how much damage does his burst do with this build? Unless you have extremely godly artifacts, not expecting this to crit, so we'll watch the raw damage. So we are seeing 18,000 damage, no crit for an HP shield bot build. This is rather high end also considering level level burst and him being level 90. If this were to crit, it would deal 36,000 damage since I have about 100 crit damage. I would consider this particular build to be the entry Zhongli build. New to the game, don't have many resources to invest, slap all the HP onto him to increase his shield and run black tassel. It's easy and effective. The alternative side of this coin is burst DPS Zhongli. This build trades super beefy HP build for geo damage and some crit. His shield still remains effectively strong, but his burst now packs an immensely bigger punch. Typically a build here would attempt deathmatch for insane crit rate or homa for crit damage and HP conversion, but both of those options may not be available to budget players. So instead I'm demonstrating this with a utility weapon, the Vonius Lance at R580. With an HP% percent Geo Damage and Crit Base build, still running 4-piece Tenacity, I'm getting about 33,000 HP here, but 70 Crit Rate and 110 Crit Damage. Recharge is more than enough at 150. 33,000 HP still grants an 11,500 to 16.5k HP shield depending on the level. You can see here that Burst Damage on Crit increases to about 45,000 damage. Obviously, not going to a crit every time, but the effective damage here with 70 crit reaches nearly 40,000 damage. If I were to swap this to R180 Homa with 174 crit damage now, this damage increases to 67,000 damage crit. So I would say that both playstyles do their job fantastically. HP Shield Bot provides such a humongous shield that allows your team to play extra lazy while not sacrificing too much damage, it just crits. Burst DPS is my personal favorite though, since I'm not in need for such a tanky shield, and I'd hate to see that huge multiplier not being used. Here's a bonus clip of R590 Homa Zhongli damage. And finally, if you want to run main DPS Zhongli, well, I don't think I need to assist you there, right? Standard DPS playstyle, have at it. All right, so weapons for Zhongli, what is he prioritizing? HP Shieldbot likes maximizing HP, Burst DPS and Main DPS like general damage, and then Favonius Lance exists purely as a utility weapon. In the previous section, we went over some basic damage comparisons between both playstyles, so we can simplify this discussion to simply what weapons work and what I would personally recommend. 3-star weapons. Black Tassel. F2P friendly, it's a pure HP% percent weapon, perfect for early or late game Shieldbot Zhongli. Focus is mainly keeping your team alive with maximized strength shield uptime. 4-star Star Glitter and 4-star Favonius Lance. These are the default recharge weapons. Favonius is strictly better than the Star Glitter in all accounts. Personal favorite weapon to use when autopiloting Zhongli on the team for Favonius Lance. 4 star, the catch. Not super optimal, but he does use every single stat technically on the weapon. The energy recharge here is a bit overkill though. 145% for a 40 cost is more than enough. 4 star, Elliptic Spear and Deathmatch. These are the damage oriented weapons with solid scaling and good synergy. Lithic Spear is a Luya party member stat stick. Zhongli is from Luya, so you get one default stack. Deathmatch is the standard crit stat stick. Any general damage dealer can use it, including himself. Other notable mentions, Blackcliff and Wavebreaker are options, but I generally see very few, if any, players run these weapons on Zhongli. They provide no useful utility besides mediocre damage, and Wavebreaker's passive is anti-synergistic with Zhongli since he has the lowest cost burst, where Wavebreaker wants maximum cost for the entire team. Five star weapons, Skyward Spine. This weapon has a good base attack, default energy recharge, a slight crit rate boost, and additional attack speed if running main DPS Zhongli. 
Really, it's just if you need these particular stats and no unique passive. 5 star Jade Spear and Calamity Queller. These are main DPS Jolly based weapons where he's on the field to stack the weapon passives. They both have identical weapon passives for the most part. 5 star Engulfing Lightning. I would suggest not using this on Jolly, keep this on Raiden or Shaolin. 5 star Homa. So, this is his best in slot, perfect synergy with increased HP percent, it's attack conversion based off of HP, crit damage stat stick, and default base attack. So for personal weapons that I'd stick to, we have Black Tassel for 3 star, Favonius Lance, Lithic Spear at R5, Deathmatch for the 4 star battle pass, and Homo 5 star. And additionally, if my editor wishes, he can put a chart of the burst damage numbers we saw in the previous section. On to Zhongli's artifacts. As I mentioned, Zhongli has probably one of the most flexible combinations of artifacts for basically any character. Of course, some are going to be more optimal than others, but this is still dependent on what type of build you are prioritizing on your Zhongli. We have 2-4 piece Tenacity set, 2-4 piece Petra set, 2-4 piece Noblesse, and 2-4 piece Emblem set. And separated from the rest are less synergistic artifacts but still viable, 2 piece Shimanawas and 2 piece Gladiator set. So the reason why he has so many options is because he independently benefits from so many stats. HP percent, Geo damage percent, recharge, burst damage percent, and the less important attack percent. Of those four to six choices that I recommended, I would prioritize the first three: Tenacity, Petra, and No Plus Set. The four-piece Tenacity is optimal recommendation for a shield bot or burst DPS Jolly. A pure burst DPS Jolly can prioritize Petra plus No Plus for strict geo damage and burst damage, or a four-piece Emblem Set for the recharge conversion into burst damage. Now keep in mind, 4-piece Emblem generally doesn't get the most value because Zhang Li requires little recharge with his 40 class burst. New players, don't focus on the set bonus. Exile is fine, but you'll probably just prioritize a triple HP main stat. That brings us to main stats, and we have multiple options here. So, HP Shield Bot Build, that's triple HP percent slam. So that's HP on the Sands, HP on the Goblet, and HP on the Circlet. Aim for any additional recharge from the substats if you'd like to maintain burst uptime. Crit rate and crit damage as necessary as well, otherwise HP percent and even flat HP if just aiming for raw HP. First DPS build, this is what I'm running, it's the HP percent timepiece, geo damage goblet, and a crit rate or crit damage mask. This is a standard HP scaling DPS build, this provides the best of both worlds in shield strength and damage output. You probably would be sacrificing about 30 to 35 percent of your HP, but doubling the consistency of your burst damage. Then we get to mixed shield bot DPS build, there's two choices in this category. Is the HP HP crit build or the HP Geo HP build. This one trades one of the artifacts of DPS from either the Geo or the crit for more HP percent. This is a heavier lean towards shield strength of damage output and probably would expect your Johnny to have 40,000 HP here, but you'd be sacrificing a little bit of your damage. And then finally, standard main DPS build. This is attack with whatever goblet, I'll label it as X here, and crit. So the goblet can flex between physical, cryo, pyro, whatever flavor of main DPS Johnny you like, doesn't matter. So my current Johnny is a burst DPS build on Favonius Lance with 4 piece tenacity, running HP percent, geo damage, and crit rate mask. Stats are not the best substat wise, and could definitely use some improvement. Constellations. In my opinion, John Lee's constellations benefit very little for his core gameplay. Sure, you'll definitely see when he does have constellations, but they are mostly survivability, quality of life, and not significant game breaking changes. In that sense, it's good that his value is not but locked behind constellations, and what you get at constellation 0 is essentially his entire value as a character. Constellation 1. Two pillars can now exist on the field instead of one. Each pillar resonates individually, and other geo constructs can resonate twice as much. Mostly a DPS increase because each resonate is an instance of elemental skill damage. Constellation 2. Activating his burst grants him and any nearby co-op members a G shield. On top of being an easy shield refresh for rotations, this allows his shield to be team-wide in co-op. Without Constellation 2, his shield is not team-wide even if you hold the elemental skill down. C3 and C5 are plus levels to his elemental skill and elemental burst respectively. Constellation 4 increases the size of his burst damage AoE field. This is not the damage, this is the area of impact. And also increases the petrified time from 4 seconds to 6 seconds, which is honestly pretty significant and attributes to a 33 to 50% uptime if perfectly rotated burst. Constellation 6 turns Zhongli into a mini healer. His Jade Shield converts 40% of incoming damage to HP for the current active character. 
a single tick cannot exceed 8% of current a character's max HP. What this means is if you take 25,000 damage, for example, in one hit, Johnny's shield will not heal you for 10,000, but rather 1,200 HP if you have 15,000 HP. On average, though, if Johnny's shield is 15,000 effective HP, this ability heals up to 6,000 HP. In my opinion, I'd only go for Johnny's constellations if you just really like the character. Constellation 2's AoE shield is quite a nice quality of life buff. So, what teams does he fit on? Honestly, any team comp that you can think of. Not even kidding. With the exception of freeze comps though, since he might interfere with freeze reactions. For most teams, Johnny doesn't improve the clear speed of them. He's what you would call the universal protector. The Genshin dad that takes care of you when you're younger, and when you're older and able to face the world without training wheels, Johnny just sits back and retires. Now that being said, he does have a few compositions where he is an optimal choice. Geo DPS, for example, for Ito, Ningguang, or Noel. Uh, mono Geo comps involving those particular compositions. Hu Tao plus Xing Chiao plus John Lee plus another double Geo typically. A Xiao comp with John Lee, and then these two slots can either be double Geo, double Animo, or Bennett included. Meld Ganyu to protect her charge shots. Kli DPS to protect her normal to charge attack string. Yula plus John Lee plus a superconduct enabler since John Lee provides physical resistance shred with his shield. Normal attack cards like Yoimiya plus John Lee to protect her normal attack string. Protecting interruption of certain characters is often an overlooked benefit because it essentially protects loss of DPS when a character is able to perform optimal rotations without being interrupted. Besides these teams though, John Lee has one additional important role. He's the master of lazy play. Since his shield and kit has so much built-in survivability, he reduces the necessity of dodging and avoiding mechanics. Except for the doggos. But we don't talk about the doggos. They're mean. So a lot of players really enjoy not being bullied by enemies and their mechanics. And this improves their experience of the game a lot when they don't have to stress over playing perfectly. And this concept I think is sometimes suppressed because as gamers we always mention optimal and meta and perfect play and execution. But sometimes after a long day, you just want someone to babysit you like John Lee does. All right, let's showcase two compositions that run John Lee. He'll be running the Favonius Lance with four piece tenacity and burst DPS HP Geo crit build. Cue the music, Mr. Cope. And with the showcase complete, that about wraps up the core of this kind. With a universally protective kit, John Lee excels at keeping your team alive and uninterrupted under any and all circumstances that don't involve corrosion. If this guide helped you understand John Lee a little better, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's free and really helps the video get recommended and reach a broader audience. Thanks for watching, and I wish that everyone's still trying to wish for John Lee the best of luck. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.